Hello, and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Now, I'm not a fan of sensationalist headlines, but I take a break for two weeks and the cybersecurity world goes nuclear. Now, over the last few days, you may have heard of things like the SolarWinds hack, the FireEye hack, the US government hack, and I'm gonna try to break it down as to what actually happened and why this matters. And for those of you who haven't heard about it, to give you some context as to what's going on. Before we dive into the details though, I just wanna mention that this is possibly the largest cybersecurity event in history. There is no understating it. And I believe there's a lot of stuff that's going to keep following up on this. So this is a first in a series of probably several videos where we go through this in detail, look at what happened, look at the actual sample, but we'll kick things off with some context and give you some of the important details so you know whether or not you should be concerned, what you could do, how you could be affected and what you should do about it. Essentially, this whole show started when FireEye discovered that they were hacked. And that's a big deal because FireEye is a cybersecurity company and they work with a lot of defense agencies. They have a lot of very important information about nation states, threat actors, all of that. And that was possibly compromised, including their own research tools. And FireEye is mostly an offensive security organization, which means they actively try to hack systems to check if they're secure. So if a threat actor got access to their tools, which are, I'm assuming, quite sophisticated, they could use the same techniques to hack into anything that FireEye could hack into. But that's the tip of the iceberg. As if this wasn't bad enough as a cybersecurity incident, then it turned out that SolarWinds, one of the companies that builds and manages a lot of IT infrastructure, was actually at the center of this hack. And you might be wondering, well, I've never heard of SolarWinds, why do I care? Well, the thing is, you may not have used SolarWinds directly as a customer of theirs, but the problem is a lot of the internet services and companies that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis, they might have SolarWinds in some part of their infrastructure. So if SolarWinds software is breached, we have no idea how deep this goes and how much access the attackers have to different aspects of the servers, the services, the network that are all operating that have some elements of SolarWinds as part of their setup. So now let's talk a little bit about the attack itself and what happened. This is where Sunburst, another term, comes in. Now Sunburst is the actual malware that was deployed as part of the SolarWinds compromise. And it's essentially a supply chain backdoor. For those of you who remember the C Cleaner incident, this might sound familiar. So what happened was SolarWinds was compromised and the update mechanism they used for SolarWinds Orion, which is their software, was used to deliver a Trojan backdoor known as Sunburst. So let's take a quick look at the IOC here, or the indicator of compromise. This is the installer on Vars Total. So this is the core update uh, package that compromised all of these systems. And as you can see, it's not detected by um, that many engines because it's 200 megabytes in size. And this is, I think, a growing trend in cybersecurity right now because a lot of antivirus and anti-malware software is limiting detections to something like five megabytes, 10 megabytes. If it's bigger than that, we just don't scan the file. And threat actors are like, oh, that's easy. We just need to make sure that our malware is part of a 200 megabyte file and just have to encrypt it heavily so it doesn't get detected until it's already too late. And so subsequently, um, this file obviously drops the actual Trojan. Now, another thing you notice about this file is this is a DLL file. If you remember my video about dynamic linked libraries in Windows, why that is a massive security risk and the trade-off that comes with it, it's very relevant here. I think we had a similar case with one of the later Petya wiper incidents. Essentially, a DLL is a linked library, which means that another file, when it loads, has the power to evoke this library and make it active and whatever code is within it. So the Trojan would not be something that runs directly, but as the SolarWinds software runs, it is going to use the code. And when it accesses this library, the malware gets executed. That's the basic chain of events as to how this malware was activated. The backdoor itself, as you can see, is detected by 52 engines. Um, still troubling that some of the engines still don't detect it. And again, basic tip to all of you at home, um, something to consider is if you're setting your antivirus product to only scan for .exe files, beware because a lot of DLL files can be malicious. 
I would even go so far as to say that that's the more common attack factor these days. But coming back to the broader incident, I think every cloud has a silver lining and that's true. In this case, the good news is that companies like Microsoft that have identified this have managed to mitigate the effects to some extent by finding a kill switch. I think the fact that FireEye got involved at an early stage definitely helped fuel the research around this threat and we're seeing everybody come up with their own analysis, which we will do as well. As far as I understand, the threat is more than happy to lay dormant and not do anything and avoid analysis when it can't perform certain tasks and I think that was kind of the Achilles heel for this malware. It had a very specific set of instructions and if it encountered an error in those set of instructions, it would basically go nowhere. And that allowed people to find a way to universally disable it. That's not to say that the risk has been mitigated. I think one of the biggest concerns with this malware is how long it could have been active and the access it would have given the threat actors or the attackers. They might have gained persistent access by this point, which means that they could have many different paths to access these systems by now. Maybe they have the passwords um, that the employees were using. Maybe they have some kind of other remote access tool within the network. So if you're in incident response and IT or cybersecurity, you may have to very well go deep into every single system that has solar winds to make sure that there are no other paths of access for the attackers, even if you get rid of the original attack. And that's true for every system that had anything to do with SolarWinds and possibly other software that uses SolarWinds. That is a very long and painful process that I'll have to commence very soon. Now, here is a very quick guide as to what you should do in terms of instant response for the SolarWinds backdoor. This is by no means comprehensive. I just came across it on Twitter and it was kind of useful. So I just wanted to share it. I'll link it in the description. So if you're in the firing line, take a look at some of these steps. There's a lot of things here about investigation, about looking at logs, trying to find retroactively um, what could have happened. But I think what's more important right now is making sure that there are no existing paths of access for the attackers, no users are compromised, and you may have to begin a lot of this cleansing by shutting down the network, which is again hard to do in a lot of cases. That's not all though. Um, the US government just released a joint statement with the FBI, the CISA, and the Director of National Intelligence that a lot of US government networks could be compromised and that this is the work of a nation state attacker. I'm not going to go too much into this because I think there's a lot of investigation going on at the moment and I'll keep you updated as events unfold. But there you go, that's basically the cyber Armageddon that's been unfolding in the last couple of weeks. We will take a deeper dive into the actual sunburst backdoor, do some more analysis on it, and I believe we'll keep talking about this issue because I don't think this is the end of it. Who knows how long these attackers have been in these networks and what they've influenced, what they haven't influenced. But hopefully this video helps you understand the situation. Please like and share this if you enjoyed it, especially if you're in the tech industry. I think it's absolutely crucial that you keep tabs on this incident because it may have affected you in some way or the other. This is Leo from the PC Security Channel. Thank you so much for watching and as always stay informed stay secure and don't forget to subscribe because we're gonna stay right on top of this